Over the past few weeks, the channel has been focusing on the many Neolithic ruins which can still be found littering our planet. Enigmatic earthworks, built in a bygone age, supposedly by our primitive, flint-wielding ancestors. Enormous ancient undertakings, like that of the Long Barrows or Solstice-aligned mounds, such as Newgrange. We also explored dolmens, found the world over, along with many other recurring Neolithic features. However, there still remains many as yet unexplained, yet clearly excellently executed ruins that, due to the capabilities of their past constructor, fortunately still exist to this day. Ancient supposed Neolithic ruins, such as that of the effigy mounds. It seems, regardless of the gigantic effort these would have once been, for currently claimed architects, these effigy mounds, such as that of the Great Serpent Mound of Ohio, the largest surviving mound of this type, were created merely for entertainment purposes, or perhaps as an offering to the gods. We are, in the modern age, fully aware of serpent worship, once undertaken by ancient civilizations across South America. And due to these already understood ancient belief systems, the possibility that these unexplained mounds may have been religiously motivated becomes a logical postulation. The Great Serpent Mound is 1,348 feet long and runs along the landscape continually 3 feet high. It is claimed by some as Neolithic, yet no one seems to be able to definitively determine its age. A prehistoric effigy, located upon a plateau, aptly named Serpent Mound Crater in Adams County, Ohio. Now maintained by the Ohio History Connection, it has been designated as a National Historic Landmark by the United States Department of Interior. The Serpent Mound of Ohio was first reported from surveys by Ephraim Squire and Edwin Davis in their historic volume Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley, published in 1848 by the newly founded Smithsonian Origin. We feel Due to its inexplicable nature, archaeologists will continue to find these incredible relics difficult to explain. As such, the origins of the mound are still heavily debated. The mound, like many other ruins we've covered, we posit were in fact left by a civilization far older than currently conceived, and as such, like the many similar sites and ruins we have explored, contains no archaeological artifacts no burials, and no dating material, leaving academics with no later inhabitants to pin the site's construction on. As such, they remain incapable of establishing a permitted claim as to the age of the mound. The two main funded theories are that it was either created by the Adena culture around 320 BC or the Fort Ancient around 1070 AD. However, these claims are both light in regards to any compelling lines of deference to argue said hypothesis. Archaeologists began attributing the mound to the Fort Ancient culture within the publication of Serpent Mound, a Fort Ancient Icon, in 1996. A 2017 article, Radiocarbon Dates Reveal Serpent Mound is More Than 2,000 Years Old, argues for a construction by the Adena culture circa 320 BC, yet any solid data to confirm said claims remain elusive. The academic debate regularly experiences rebuttals, with each published in the Mid-Continental Journal of Archaeology. Who built the Great Serpent Mound, or indeed the effigy mounds as a whole? Were they, as we claim, the work of a now lost, serpent-worshipping civilization, just like that of South America's inexplicable ruins? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. In our last video, we explored compelling links connecting the countless Neolithic ruins which litter much of the world, long claimed as the work of separate Stone Age groups who, due to the claimed era of construction, supposedly never made contact, flint-wielding ancestors attributed with inexplicable trilithons many tons in weight, incredibly precise alignments, and an impressive, intimate knowledge of some of the most complex of solar orbits known to man. We posited that, regardless of the claimed isolation of these separate groups, 
The similarity found among many Neolithic buildings is unarguable evidence, suggesting that Neolithic man either didn't create these structures or they were not the primitive nomad they have long been claimed as, but were instead a world-going, world-dominating superpower who built the same enigmatic barrows and henges the world over, the Harhug. These mystifying Neolithic structures are conveniently rarely explored. This may be due to their existence being a difficult task to explain. Claimed as that of tombs, it is the sheer number of them, however, which makes their existence a baffling thing to explain. As mentioned previously, many of the building types dating from the Neolithic age turn up on more than one continent. Yet the Harhug and its once enormous collection of over 600 individual so-called tombs are unique in their shape and style. Currently claimed as having belonged to the ancient settlements of the Funnel Beaker culture, who lived around 3000 BC, and although, as mentioned, there were once approximately 600 of them, the Harhug have been getting actively destroyed since their rediscovery in the modern age, with over half of them now having been destroyed to date. The megalithic tombs are built with large, rough stone slabs, each arranged into different random patterns. Ernst Sprockhoff, who created the six-category classification for Neolithic dolmens, classified them as extended dolmens. The other five types are simple dolmen, great dolmen, passage grave, long barrow, and cyst. Discovered in 1925 during excavations of Earth for the construction of the Hindenburg Dam, they were regardless largely ignored and have been little investigated since, with a brief archaeological inspection having took place in 1936. The Nurhag, a stone structure with a similar enigmatic yet unique and once in equally numerous ruin, is a Stone Age dwelling we have previously covered. Found on the island of Sardinia, they are the main type of ancient megalithic edifice found in Sardinia, yet rather differently to the lack of attention given to the mysterious Harhugs, the Nurhag have come to be the symbol of Sardinia, and indeed its distinctive culture. And dwarfing the 60 Harhugs, more than 7,000 Nurhags have been found to date, though archaeologists believe that originally there were more than 10,000. And this could quite possibly be the case with the Harhugs as well, for in reality, no one can say for sure who built them, why they built them, or perhaps most importantly, when in human history this took place. Although little is known regarding the Harhugs, they are undoubtedly an incredible collection of Stone Age relics, ones which we find highly compelling. More than two years ago, a team of explorers led by scientist Vladimir Melikov were on an expedition within the Russian caves on Mount Bolshoi when they made a miraculous discovery. Reports from Russian newspapers at the time indicated that a briefcase and two alien-like skulls were discovered in the cave systems of the Caucasus region. What is amazing about the briefcase is the insignia which can be found upon its front. It is the emblem of the Ananerbi, once the Nazi's most secretive institutions. Founded by Heinrich Himmler in 1935, their mission was to find evidence that the Aryan race had once ruled the entire world. But they also branched into occultism, paranormal research, pseudoscience, and the study of UFOs and weapons development, all due to Himmler's obsession with such things. The strange appearance of the skulls has led to speculation that the Nazis were in contact with aliens. Mr. Melikov was reported as saying the creature is unlike anything known to man. He said among the most mysterious features of the skulls is the absence of a cranial vault or jaws. The eye sockets are also unusually large. He added, even when compared with the skull of a bear, it is hard to think that you do not have in your hands the remains of an alien creature. Paleontologists in Moscow were shown pictures of the skulls. They reportedly dismissed the skulls, saying they could have been exposed to sand for long periods of time, which could have altered their shape. Russian newspaper reports have also recorded other German discoveries in the area, including last summer when Elbrus Hunters found a second suitcase with the Anenerby logo. It is thought to have belonged to the huntsman of the German division Edelweiss, and was found along with a ring showing a soldier in a mountain cap and a Nazi uniform. The Edelweiss was an emblem of the German mountain troops during World War II. Also in 2014, reports said locals in the same area found the burial site of German infantry, believed to have been killed in an avalanche years earlier. What do you think about the finds? Are these skulls proof that the Nazis knew of the existence of aliens? or maybe that they were even in contact with such entities? 
The skulls and briefcase are now said to be stored at an archaeological complex in Belovode, a site which stores many historical artifacts. Further studies are desperately needed before they vanish from public view. The megalithic marvels of lore, very rarely studied, academically explored, or publicized, yet regardless of this, remains one of the most curious and intriguing ruins of the Neolith Menhir age. Not only still in existence, but with many Menhir still erect, still standing tall across the landscape to this day, a legacy left to us by a now lost civilization. A collection of curious, kooky, and oftentimes mischievously graffitied prehistoric menhirs. The menhirs were often elaborately carved, and due to the unexplainable scale of some of the stones, cut, quarried, and eventually raised along the valley, it is clearly an example of an inexplicable ruin, an ancient relic left to us, once created using unknown technologies at an unknown time within history. A now lost, yet once highly advanced ancestor. Impossible for the current academically claimed culture, which is clearly a fallacy within modern paradigm. Some of the inexplicably huge stones incorporated into these sites are now being found scattering our planet. Like that of the Plain of Jars located in Laos, an unusual, enigmatic site we have also covered in the past, possesses stonework from megalithic blocks of inexplicable sizes. These gigantic stone carvings, menhirs and jars, some still in astonishing conditions, are a testament to what our lost ancestors were once capable of, and due to the immense size of the stones they could control, have successfully left their mark far into an unknown future, our present. The channel feels a duty, clearly as a far less capable civilization, that we do not withhold the evidence for their existence, which has been a great disservice to those who deserve the truth. Multi-ton menhirs are located all across the Bada Valley, but not just the Bada Valley. Menhirs can be found across the globe, located in many countries, even in New Zealand in Rodney County. The erosion of many of the world's menhir stonework, we feel, is indicative of incredible aging, and as such, possibly from the same era as the Bada Valley's mysterious menhirs. Yet regardless of whoever made these sculptures, there will never be any academically admittance to the evidence that these particular stone workings are found all over the planet. Yet regardless of any one's opinions regarding their past use, a function undertaken at a time so long ago, we may never know the true purpose of what our distant ancestors may have been trying to tell us all those millennia ago, only time will tell. The menhirs and the hinges found worldwide, many now widely known about, have blown a few holes into the hull of the sinking ship that is academic paradigm. The fact that these menhirs are no less common and no less scattered across the globe merely lays another nail in the coffin for the timelines academia put forward for the migrations of man, and even our beginnings, for to have these unusual megaliths everywhere, their builders must have been everywhere too. A highly advanced, highly capable, once world-going ancient civilization an extremely long time ago. One which we find highly compelling. <laughs>